Um, well, I'm the waste reduction manager. So right now we have a contractor who picks up all the, who services all the indoor compost bins as well as the outdoor compost bins. And they get taken to the facility in Cobble Hill, which is called Fisher Road Recycling. Um, I think we have one of the best composting programs personally, um, just from even our food services perspective. All the post-consumer food waste at Mystic Market and all the retail and residential dining operations here compost their food waste. I mean, they're the reason why the program is so successful. I think it started in 2003 and because of the good work that they do, we have such a high diversion rate because um, the, a lot of the food waste comes from there. And then we sort of gradually expanded it to um, these, the indoor composting program where we have 277 indoor bins. I don't think any other university has done that in terms of that scale. There are a lot of indoor composting programs uh, uh, in other campuses, but they're mostly sort of volunteer or their bins that are set up in dining operations. But in terms of campus-wide, yeah, it's, I think it's quite rare. When we first thought about being carbon neutral, like obviously it's a fast food joint, and one of the things that most fast food joints do is produce a ton of garbage. Mm -hmm. and the stigma around that, so I wanted to try to do something different. And the original idea and the mission of Food Eco District is to make that one district completely carbon neutral. So that was the original idea. Restaurants obviously are, it's a low hanging fruit of, uh, of um, emissions. Um, they produce four to 500 tons a year of uh, carbon emissions. Um, so uh, relative to like an office space, so that doesn't produce a ton. So um, it seemed like the right idea. And then obviously getting into uh, the gardening component, we have a, a community garden at our country location. Um, it just made a lot of sense because um, they, they, over the last, food, Fed's been around for about four years. Um, they've created a good infrastructure of uh, knowledge around uh, composting and gardening and that kind of stuff. So it, it fits really, really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, gives us you know, not only access to uh, the compost, but uh, uh, more gardens around the city where we can actually you know, distribute the compost, right? We don't, we're not involved in that end of it, but yeah. they use our supplier that provides the compost for that kind of stuff. Well, it, it is quite pricey. It really depends on the contractor and how you're set up regionally or municipally. We have a composting facility in Cobble Hill, so that's about a 45-50 minute drive away, so you have to think about transportation costs and then the tipping fees at the facility. Um, we also have the contractor actually go inside buildings and um, service the indoor bins because we just installed 277 indoor compost bins around campus. Um, so yeah, it can get quite pricey, um, but it's worth it in my opinion. And the administration thought it was worth it as well, looking at sort of the business case that we should be ramping up our composting program and uh, trying to get to that 75% landfill diversion rate, which is our goal. I thought it was going to be super expensive. I thought it was going to be a bunch of barriers to entry and that kind of stuff, but yeah. it really wasn't. Like It probably cost us an extra like three, four hundred dollars a month when we first started. Yeah. Um, but now that cost has come down. Um, it's also, there's a ton of uh, um, synergies when it comes to um, uh, marketing and things like that. So even though it costs us maybe four or five hundred dollars more a month to do it, the value in doing it was re returned tenfold just because of the fact that we were doing it. Uh, as more and more people spend the money on those things, then uh, there's better supply and the cost comes down.
brings you to your waist stream a bit more. Encourage these to run possibilities. Because that it can create such a wide variety of issues mm -hmm. for people in terms of smell or um, leaks, etc., and so or fruit flies during the summer season. But yeah, we've managed to come out of it okay, and then we just deal with it when the issues arise. If there are any complaints, then we service the bin, we try and have a robust service schedule, um, and we're also very aware of the fruit cycle, the, um, the cycle of the fruit fly, and as well as we install like lids and filters in areas where they're really bad or in areas where there's high usage. I think you notice that some of the bins have lids and some don't. So we're kind of just managing that as we go along. Can we be completely zero waste? Yes, we can, but it, it really takes a huge cultural behavioral shift. And the other thing is, is like different things of getting um, the proper uh, straws, right? The, you know, if you look at this thing right here, when we first started, uh, there wasn't compostable cups, there wasn't compostable lids, there wasn't compostable straws. So as we move along, we're able to find a compostable cup. Then we're able to find a compostable lid, and now we can get compostable straws. You've got to do the work up front, right? So you you source all the materials that are compostable, and you, those are your purchasing decisions. Um, and like we found, like now everything that we have in our restaurant is 100% compostable. So there's no thought. The challenges here, I would say, um, are one, the rodents. Mm -hmm. Getting in and shoot through basically anything and um, yeah the best thing that you can do is essentially wrap everything in a quarter inch wire mesh. Um, the, the second thing I would say is moisture content. So here um, like we have a rainfall morning for today mm -hmm. so if your compost pile doesn't have a lid or a covering on it it runs the risk of becoming totally waterlogged and that essentially drowns all the microorganisms that you're trying to breathe. So you really need to have a lid. You know, so what do you do with all that stuff that you can't put in your compost bin? And uh, we sell something called the Green Cone Digester, uh, which is essentially where you can put all that stuff. You dig it into your garden, uh, you throw all of the cooked food, dairy, food, bones, whatever in there. And it turns into like a pretty gross sludge in the bottom that leaches out into the soil. It's still totally nutrient rich um, and benefits the soil, but it's different from composting if you don't uh, harvest a finished kind of soil product from it. Um, I think the education piece is always a big question mark for us. I mean, we put signage out there, we try to have updated websites, etc. I don't know if you've seen those videos that we did with Thunder um, on the screens where he's kind of trying to promote our recycling system and composting system. I think people are kind of confused sometimes about what can go in there and sometimes it can people just dump general garbage in there. So yeah, the education piece is big. Um, also the consumption piece is a, an issue. I mean, I know, I don't know if you guys know about vulture culture, but people, like there's a student movement that's trying to actually reduce the amount of post-consumer food waste that we have. Um, there's no reason why we should have as much as we do. There just needs to be more public education, basically, I think, on, you know, what composting is, like how it's different, how that green bin program is different from home composting. You know, there's like a lot of confusion about the fact that you can throw everything and anything in your green bin, but you can't do that in home in your backyard bin. A pure organic use of that oil is biodiesel, locally. Uh, they are prepared to pay for the oil, but I say I don't want the, the money, we'll donate it back to help the infrastructure, right? So they're right. putting up pumps and different types, types of things that'll actually help um, build the infrastructure for the stuff so that the, the oils that are collected can actually, you know, 
be used for, for biodiesel and that kind of stuff. It speaks to the mission of what you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're sending stuff away, then you're, you know, a lot of times you can actually be creating more emissions by, by sending it away, because everything has to be shipped, right? So, um, and you're not building any local infrastructure. So how it becomes cheaper, easier, more beneficial is just keeping it within a range that the people in your community can benefit from it. Okay. Um, otherwise, you're, you know, it's gonna take that much longer. Like if you build your community from this way out, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than that way, that way, that way, that way. <laughs> so there's no, you don't get any economies of scale. Mm -hmm. So that's the key is sort of getting, creating the infrastructure so you can get the economy of scale. So it's the most effective, the most uh, inexpensive, and uh, most uh, environmentally friendly. So it actually gets trucked over to the mainland, currently, um, and we can talk about that for hours and hours. Uh, that's not the way the CRD plans to have it roll out. I don't blame them at all. It's a very difficult thing to have an industrial composting facility in the like There's like no It's hard to criticize it in, because at least it's being utilized. Like they're, yeah. they're doing something good. They, uh, it's a good alternative. Like I, I'm not that um, you know radical when it comes to it. Like if there's a local source, that's the first source, mm -hmm. and then if there's you know off island source, then that's the second source. Right. Um, and eventually, you'll get the infrastructure where you'll be able to do that locally. Mm -hmm. um, and there'll be more of a demand locally. So that's sort of just, it's like walking before you run, right? But you have to take the first step. So if that's a, a step and then you can maybe reel it back in, then then that's something that the you, know, you can look to the future for. But. Uh, what are you studying? I am a history major. Uh, software engineering and yeah. software engineering. Yeah. Sociology and social work. And do you compost through the municipal pickup system? Yep. Yeah, I, I compost through the municipal pickup. Yeah. If I had one, like I said, yeah. I would yeah use it. We don't we don't have an official one, but we have our own little tin. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did the city not provide one for you? Or? Uh, I think maybe I was supposed to request one or something. I don't know. I don't I don't have one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the situation involving getting them. What do you think the importance of composting is? I think it's super important to like give back like what we're taking from the earth into the earth and just like avoid creating so much waste especially. Like there's just like yeah, we're a huge like capitalist, consumerist, like wasteful culture and I think it's really important to yeah, realize that. Um, I think it's important to see what we can keep out of the landfills. Yeah. Compost is a great way to do that. And do you think there's anything we could do to improve composting on campus or in Victoria? I noticed that like there's not um, compost bins like available at every garbage can or like at every space that there is garbage. So that probably means that like sometimes people just throw things away that could be composted. So maybe just like upping the amount of like actual compost bins that there are available. More readily available green bins. People, especially students, are lazy. They don't want to travel farther or do more work if they could just throw things in the garbage. Where if there was a composting bin with every garbage can, they'd probably be like, okay, well, I might as well throw it in the compost because it is right here. I mean, some places still don't have the green bins attached to the garbage ones, and you're kind of like forced right there. to just, you're kind of forced to just throw them out, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's a downside, I guess. Yeah.